What a glorious day in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint, and it feels like spring, just in time for spring football to be over. That's mm. just, just, in, just in time. Just in, just time. in time. Just in time. Justin Zwick, Bobby like Carpenter. There's no pun uh, for that one right my now. My dad made it just in time to see me be born. That's where yeah. I got my name. Love it. Beautiful. Oh. This is Nicole Cox, and I am Austin Ward. Spring game, spring camp, it's all wrap. Bobby, what did you think? What was your first impression when you left the horseshoe on Saturday? Oh, how much I love the power. Full house backfield. Ooh, Woody yeah. Hayes. Get a steady dose. Mr. Of- Hayes. People ask how you're going to use both Travion and Quinchon. That's it right there. The full house backfield. Just first really, snap of the game. Yeah, hogging it in there. Some You like the spins on the shift and everything else. Got all these tight ends. You got Bill Kazmaier's son in there. I mean, he's out there mauling dudes. Yeah. So... I mean, outside of that, the tribute, I heard someone like, well, they didn't have anything cool like Archie last year. I'm like, what do you want him to bring back? Like, exhume, like, uh, Vic Janowitz? I mean, like, Archie's the guy. Hop along, <laughs> hop, Go. Let's get Hop along out there. I think he's still alive, but not in great health. And maybe he did pass away recently. I know he used to go on the cruise a lot, but he was not in great health for a while. Like, that's the great, the perfect tribute. And it shows, like, Chip is a... He is a student of football history, loves to run the rock, did a great job at the coaches' clinic talking about the stretch play. Fantastic job. How much he loves to run stretch into the boundary. It's Schleg's oh, his, yes. it's his favorite play. <laughs> Can't wait to see Maybe he didn't say that. Didn't but, exactly say it that way. <laughs> but, but he said there are a bunch of different ways you can run are. stretch. You don't have to just run it uh, out of pistol and into the boundary. Yeah, I mean, he's got, <laughs> got Hey, <options>. all right. <laughs> I think what we learned is the defensive backs are really good. Mm-hmm. Very good secondary, and everybody saw the highlights, you know, and every, all the plays the receivers made. You get in a game where it's windy, and it was very windy on Saturday. It's tough for the quarterbacks to throw, especially young guys, and, like, that may have been the worst environment Julian Sands ever played a football game in. Probably. I mean, the guys from the yeah. West Coast, like, yeah. he's normally <laughs> playing. I was talking to some of the coaches, like, when you're throwing in the woody every day, and then basically where you grew up is indoors, because yeah. it's Cal- Southern California, like, it's going to be easy. You get a nice 25-hour crosswind, that seven route all of a sudden pff, takes yeah. a nosedive, mm-hmm. and it's tough. And so I think we saw how good they were. The young quarterbacks, there's a little work needs to be done, that right side of the offensive line. They're trying, man. They had Tegra Shibola in there at guard. Mm-hmm. Um, someone's like, why do they keep jamming Fryer and attack? I'm like, because they're just trying to figure out who can I think play beside him. I think he is the best tackle. Like That's just where they're going. He is. And so like, then who can be the best guard? Yeah. He's probably the best guard, but they don't have a best tackle. So that, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's the problem that's- that they're trying to like figure out. So you know, I think you saw that. Um, some of the linebackers' defense played, real, played pretty well. Uh, young running backs. I thought Mr. Peeps, yeah. my Peeps, and then uh, wasn't the Sam Dick, Sam Williams Dixon. <clears throat> uh, I thought he looked pretty good. And a healthy T.C. Caffey. Yeah, and Caffey. Like, so everybody was worried about Dallin leaving, and not that he's not a loss, but I was really impressed with how those young guys were able to come out and step up. And honestly, for Sam Williams Dixon, because I saw him in high school, and I thought he might have a little bit of more maturation to go like <clears throat> to, before he's ready to play, and he's looked really good all spring. So... I think they're pretty happy with where that room's at. Jay Z, how are those mod sticks? Uh, mm. Delicious. You see the string. Yeah, yeah you know, mm. the I gotta string, get just to show the how, string how, of goo. how gooey it is <laughs> when it comes out. Like you know, every mm. every time they're here, that's right. They're the delicious. goo right on your face. Did you know that on Tuesday they're three dollars at Roosters? What? Yeah. Uh-huh. Three dollars on well, Tuesday? Not, not three dollars per mod stick. Three dollars for a full <laughs> basket. Appetizer um, three. Come on, get in here. Tuesday, three, three bucks three, for boom. that. Plate of deliciousness. And you yeah. get the marinara sauce. Well, like, I know. That's the one I didn't dip it because, you know, the whole you don't double dip. It's okay. That's your bag. We have three well, different containers. When, when Berm comes over, you just never know where he's going to go. I think Berm well, would love to share, he's gonna share put, your juices. You know he's going to put the hot sauce on there. Fair enough. Like a weirdo. I mean, you're basically, you put the marinara yeah. on there. You're you're 90% of the way to a full meal right there. 100%. You get the cheese. You get the sauce. I mean, it's a They're pizza. Classic. It's, it's They're portable classic. pizza. They're the they just make you feel good. Here's the thing. I mean. We need to probably find a way, Nicole, on that menu, which is robust and large and packed with opportunities. A Mott's and Tots, some sort of combo, <laughs> like a it. shareable. It rolls off the tongue. It really does. Throw some cheese on top of oh, it, bake it a little bit, and Mott's and Tots. Wait, and you need, Jay-Z, you want cheese on top of your Mott's so you're putting and Tots? If you're cheese. putting Tots on there and you're yeah. going to make a plate of it, you just make a, a wild <laughs> plate of cheese and you cheese and You should order the rooster's nest and then just Ooh. put some mozzarella sticks in there. there Maybe there that might be an Cut addition. Up, use, a, use the mozzarella stick as a fork. 
Oh, that's it's like that's basically down. a lick of color. Then we're going to eat sugar with the sugar. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, love it. Right. Yep. I'm going to have a full relapse here soon. Um, <laughs> Jay Z, what did you think on Saturday? Wake it. <clears throat> I thought it was a spring game. Yeah, it I, was. Uh, You're not excited like I, about it. I, I feel like I it. wish I would have seen the older guys a little bit more. Once that second half came, it was just kind of over. Yeah. Um, I wish they would have maybe – I know the wind stunk, but, I think the but they're going to have to play into yeah. that. You know, and I think there was a part of it where it was like, all right, well, we do have this wind. Throw a couple picks. We don't, want, we don't want our – Main two guys to go out there and maybe not look the best, you know, in this wind and everything else going on, you know, with Will being new and just having 15 practices under his belt now. You know, I think there's probably something where, all right, we're going to keep it safe here. We just want to go out and be in control of the offense, you know, make whatever checks they need to or, you know, make the throws that they that we call. But it would have been fun just to see because they're going to have to – if it's windy against Northwestern or it's windy against somebody else, we're going to have to do it. last week so. of the regular season, perhaps. Yes. Yeah, so be windy. So I, I would have liked to maybe have tested them a little bit more in that scenario, but I kind of understand why they probably didn't. Um, Can we take so much abuse, Justin? Well, <laughs> listen, I, I understand from a guy who's been through some stuff in spring games. Like I get not wanting to go out there and have that happen to those guys. Um, leave, the, leave with the confidence high and still intact. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then you have your fans who are somewhat confident instead of saying, oh, man, what happened here? Blah, blah, through blah. seven picks in spring yeah, games. You know, so, um, I wish we'd have seen more of them. The young guys looked young. Um, you know, I, To your point, uh, I don't know if it was a seven that saying yeah. through, but the, he, he threw one and was kind of short-hopped it to – Jaden on the sideline, and that's even when on the broadcast, like, it's really windy out here. Mm-hmm. And then on that next throw, he goes, and you could see he put a little bit more into yeah. it, and it was still kind of got hung up and ended up getting intercepted. So, I mean, you could tell the wind was there, but I, I would have liked to seen them have to, have to deal with that a little bit more. Um, now, granted, the secondary looks amazing. Uh, right. They look – there wasn't much space for those receivers, it didn't seem. Uh, so, that that's a positive. We've heard so much about them and how great they are and how they're going to be. So, as, they, as long as they can stay healthy, I think we're good there. Uh, Defensive line, I thought maybe had uh, you know a couple guys that popped. Mm-hmm. And Mitchell Melton to me was one that looked like really that. really good. Um, so that that's nice to see. C.J. Hicks, I thought played really well at, at linebacker. Um, it's tough for me. I don't even Bob. Maybe you can talk to this, but you know I saw a couple where you know Sonny maybe came up to take on the block, but knew they weren't going full and yeah. maybe didn't go in. You know, yeah. t- take that block on as maybe he would in a real game. Um, so how, how hard is that for you guys? It's you tough know? because like you're not supposed to tackle and then you're like hitting a lead. And you have blocker. a lineman coming at you and you can't yeah. go full speed into him. Because um, in a game like you'd hit yeah. down and try to like, come off and make a tackle. Whereas this, you're like, all right, I'm going to fit up. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm not bringing him down so I can't really yeah. do it. So, I mean, so maybe some of that plays into to some of those. And they're not like there were a ton of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, overall, I think we came out pretty healthy, right? Yep. Which is really all that matters. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of time this spring. The training was empty summer. after the game. That's yeah. the number I mean, one that's, goal. That's great. So, maybe, we, you know, stay healthy throughout the summer. I think we're in a really good spot. Nicole, what's in the notebook? Well, a few things. Okay. So, oh, yeah. first, I think we need to talk about 80,000 people showed up for the spring <laughs> sure game. 80,000. Isn't that 12. incredible? We, bar- we buried the lead. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, for- yes that is I very mean, good. That well is, done, Buckeye Nation. It is. It's incredible and i think it was really neat too like chip kelly he mentioned at the event we had on saturday night um that he's said i've never been to a spring game where eighty thousand people come so he said this was our season get, attendance last year so to give, yeah. he, he walked Combined. up he walked up into the post game room and i went over to talk to him and, and he got that number and i was like what was the most you ever had at UCLA? And he looked at me and just laughed. And I said, oh, okay, so not 80,000. <laughs> yeah. Like, UCLA wasn't even trying that. two teams in the same city? In the Rose Bowl. And you still could you know. <laughs> They weren't doing that combined for those two teams for no. spring games. That, they not do not close. care. Uh, so I those think big it's 10 great. powerhouses. I yeah. just think it's a great first impression for him. I think it's us, like, welcoming, welcoming him here, which then in turn gets him excited for the season even that much more. Mm-hmm. You know, just to realize, like, how strong Buckeye Nation is. And it was the most beautiful day. I mean, it was perfect. They even had Fan Fest set up like a normal game day, yeah. which mm-hmm. felt... It just was exciting. Yeah. Like, okay, this is going to be here before well, we know it. And parking was free. I mean, it, they... Wow, they said parking it, was free. Yeah. It was. Oh, oh, they said, I mean, ahead. you get that. I mean, it's man. Which, yeah. They may need to think about that. I, there my was understanding a lot of part, is I mean, that that could make it a little more complicated if everyone is looking free for, for a free, uh, free for all and don't have anywhere specifically to go. There needs that to be some be, order, is what well, you're saying, huh? 
my problem was is I was like, do I head closer to the shoe or Risk. do I park at the shot? Yeah. And I was so I parked at the shot and then we go to walk up. I was like, there are a ton of open spots over here. <laughs> now Lane Avenue traffic was like just dead stop traffic. Yeah, so bonkers. Mm, but, but it was I just the vibe that just everybody being it was there nice and coming it was out. Sunny. Oh, it was just a great support for the team. I loved that it was also broadcasted on Fox. It was Well, it, it hurt the defense. What do you mean? They couldn't return the interceptions for touchdown because no. yeah, Fox was yeah. the cameraman out there. Yeah. What was that? Like, he's yeah, like, we're I play. was getting kind of confused on that. I hope that. they ran it back anyway. I They're had, the was like, no, I'm going all the way. I had thousands of dollars on the defense winning the scrimmage <laughs> and was ruined by Fox. Like, <laughs> now I'm now I'm broke. It was funny. They were like, the whistle was blown, but it's okay. We're still giving them points. But it was just neat to see them broadcast the show. And they even said, they're like, well, this is kind of new for us, you know, so it was just neat to like hear from the coaches during the game. Oh, it no. was so neat. The look behind like Ryan Day where he's sitting there. The, people always want inside access and it's like, you're not getting anything better than that. Yeah. The head coach telling you, hey, we're running this play right here. Got to get it out this quicker. We're looking, we're looking for, for the seam. Yeah. Can't Here's take his, a sack and then he took one yeah. and he's like yelling at him. He see, kind of sees the camera What's, come around oh, and he's like, yeah. well, can't have it guys. <laughs> well, but that's the literally you'll, the cardinal rule in Oh, Two minutes, no sacks. Yeah. No, they'd rather throw an interception, at least end the game. Yeah. The sack, you're just going to bleed to death while everybody's <laughs> trying to run back. And so, like, talking about the reads, and then you have him over there with Jim Knowles, and you're talking about the one, because I've never been a true fan of, like, the one-word calls for everything, but they talk about how it originated to keep up with the no huddle. And you know, he's, like, talking to him. He's like, Ohio. You know, like, puts, his, <laughs> puts it back down to get the call in. And uh, people are like, well, they're hearing stuff. I'm like, it's like two or three things. No one knows what it means. And Ryan Day telling someone what the read key is on an RPO. If the defensive coordinator, they, they don't know <laughs> that. Know, yeah. then they, those yeah, guys, this guy comes in the box, they're going to replace him. <laughs> they have an idea of what's going on. So there wasn't any proprietary stuff being leaked right there. But it was a great like look inside. His interaction with the players, the coaches, Jim Knowles. Great turnout of like former Buckeyes that were there. You saw Zeke cruising around. Oh, Ward, former, Akuda, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's everything you want. It was. It was great. And I also just thought it was nice to see. I know we didn't get to see Will Howard and Devin Brown, but I thought just for, you know, saying that he, to, for these young guys to get this practice, it they need it. Like, and it was close. It was similar to a game vibe yeah. with mm -hmm. 80,000 people in there. Mm -hmm. So you could see on their faces, like, just them taking it all in, trying to figure it all out, and the wind. Like, yeah. we talked about that with CJ at the um, OSU Michigan game about how I was like, he's from California. Like, he was freezing, and I know and he's got the, the standard is the standard. There's no excuse. But it Sounds like she's mocking that is a, fact. a little bit. A little sarcasm. A little. I didn't mean to be rude. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, so rude. Well, I was. I guess I did kind of mean to be rude. But I... <laughs> But those are just facts. I mean, there's, those are things that have to be taken into consideration that these kids are not familiar with. So they need to get as much well, practice as they can. Exactly. I'm much happier that it happened today or yes. it happened on Saturday as opposed to that happening sometime in the fall in a critical game oh. where I've never really thrown in environment and elements yeah. like this. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're in a game that it's going we to be, you. it's an impact. So mm -hmm. Now you understand that the only way to get experience in elements is you've got to get out there in them. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, getting a little bit of this, and there was some a little bit of rain. They stayed mostly inside during the spring, but they'll continue to grow and make sure those young guys get to experience that. Because to your point, I mean, there's an expectation there. Ryan doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be able to go perform in this. So we need to get you practicing it. I'm not going to yeah. tell you to go do something that we're not practicing, but you get those experiences in it. Now you know. My yeah. thing, well, sorry. Yeah, no, My thing with the off. standard is the standard is just that you, you have to, these kids are learning. And as long as that's taken into consideration, that's what I loved so much about the spring game. For fans even to see, they kept saying on Fox, this is a chance for these kids to learn. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what this game mm -hmm. is for. And and I love that. Because then it's kind of a reminder, like, these are kids. They are young. They need, and this is their first experience with 80,000 fans, some of them. So, um, also I thought it was a great little reminder of how awesome a Mecca is with that one handed catch. Hey, hey, sometimes you got to let yeah. the young folks yeah, remember. Remind they had for, right? forgot. <laughs> yeah. I told them oh, there's a lot of Jeremiah talk yeah. going on here. Let me go ahead and whoop. Gotcha. Oh my. I said that after oh. the game. Like, Man. There's no person on this team that cares less about Jeremiah Smith getting attention than a Mecca. He's awesome. Yep. But 
I think remember. he did want to sign. You gotta make sure that you remember. Yeah, just, little, remember. just a little reminder in your yeah. phone as a note. <laughs> yeah, Mecca just... Buka, good receiver too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, and he is so sweet He's because he guy. was talking Jeremiah Smith up during his interview. Oh, I yeah, wasn't. Yeah. It was. It's so neat to see that for as competitive as these guys are, just to see that they know when to be a team. Um, but that catch, yeah, oof, it was, I mean, that was it was a highlight catch. Incredible. So it's like, oh, we're glad you're back, America. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, I, 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 sure yeah, it looked like it got two. It was good at the next level. Yeah. Bob, they also had the benefit. They did go outside on Friday morning for the 14th <laughs> penultimate practice of spring camp, and that was cold and windy. So yeah. a little bonus. They yeah. spent the first well, Friday. Yeah. Friday, <laughs> fr- Friday yeah. was freezing and uh, not not Ooh, too enjoyable was. for anybody to be out there. But uh, another opportunity for Julian Say and for Aaron Nolan to get a look at something that they haven't experienced before. So they crammed all that in right before they convened for summer. And now we've got a long road ahead. But before we get into that offseason, Nicole, you have a Rooster's Buckeye Leaf to give out. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to pick one I, now. I, I know. I, I you wanted to put them all into your notes. I but. know. I I I know this is kind of obvious, but I'm going to pick a Mecca just okay. because, also because of his interview. I loved how you know she was asking him questions about him, the team, and he just <clears> was <throat> just talking up Jeremiah Smith, and you could tell. I think he didn't want to speak, <laughs> like yeah. be interviewed, which. I totally get it. That's not for everyone. And so he kind of just helped him along and like kind of talked for him. And that catch, it just was like, it was, everybody was like shocked because they were talking about something else. They're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give it to Mecca just, and for him coming back too. I just, I don't know. I think it's just so great for the team, for him it's, to be a leader. It's a big deal. Jay-Z? Hmm. Well, I'm going to give mine to Tegra. Hmm. Yeah. This is in the couple series where he was at guard. Now, granted, I can't remember exactly what defense they were going against. It's really hard on the TV copy to get numbers and, and all that good stuff. But I felt like they kind of got it together when he was in there. Like, that um, was the best five. Yeah, I, I, that, that's kind of how I felt leaving the day. Um, I was surprised that we didn't see McLaughlin go at, to guard at all just to see what that might look like with maybe Hensman at center. Mm-hmm. Um, but – the couple of series when Tegra was in there, I thought, hey, this could be an offensive line. It, lo- it looked like they were getting some movement and they were able to move the ball down the field a little bit. So I, I, I'm going to go with him because that right side of that, <laughs> they need a little confidence over there. So if you're listening, you get my Buckeye leaf, but you got to keep it going. <laughs> you got to keep going. <laughs> yeah, All right. So. A little carrot and the yeah. stick at the same time. Motivation. Exactly. Ooh, this is good. I mean, I've listened to uh, some good suggestions here. Um, I'm, I'd probably give mine to. Uh, Sam Williams Dixon. I oh, thought he okay. played really well. One of the freshmen, him, maybe even him, Peoples, like both of those guys, I thought did a really good job. And it was a little bit unexpected. And there's going to be an increased level of pressure now placed upon them, given the fact that Dallin Hayden is gone. And so, mm-hmm. do they get in the portal? Is there someone even there that's worth it that you think would be better than those guys? But they showed their aptitude to be able to run the ball, find the holes, tough runners, all the physical elements. Now it's going to be can you make sure that you're good enough in pass pro? And can you make sure you know what you're doing? Let's pick up. Uh, we didn't have any balls in the ground, right? And the young guys. No, yeah, there was so, no I mean, fumbles. And that was live. Yeah, that's I mean, they were getting hit. There was a fumble early on. That was a botch exchange. But, yeah, I mean, the young guys held on to it, took care of it like they should. So that's good to see. Berm's prediction that there were going to be fumbles. You know, he he crushed it. The thud fumbles. The thud fumbles. And that's what it was. I think it was. <laughs> they weren't the... going live oh, yeah, yeah. at that <laughs> point, no. <laughs> fumble to match. That exchange. Um, yeah. No, that's a good one. All right. I I really think Calvin Simpson Hunt deserves some credit. He's often – Overlooked by me personally when I talk about that top three rotation with Jermaine Matthews, Denzel Burke, and Dave Sinigbenosin, a reminder of what Calvin Simpson Hunt can be uh, at corner as well, not just as the maybe fourth guy, but a starter at this time next year, likely with Denzel Burke and Davis Sinigbenosin gone. So that's important for the future. And you mentioned Jay Z, Mitchell Melton. I think he was so impactful in that situation on Saturday, two years removed from the devastating injury in the same situation in the spring game. You can tell that he's now back at that level where Jim Knowles was spending his first spring saying, oh, the jack position is Mitchell Melton's and like nobody else is even in the conversation. Like Mitchell Melton, Mitchell Melton helping the pass rush. It's taken him a long time to get back yeah. to that level. Bob, you've seen probably yeah. some of the, the work that he's had to go through to come back. And he, he mentioned to me a week or two ago, it's like, yeah, 
some people I don't think understand the severity of the injury. Some people don't play football again after this. Yeah. It's a big deal. He's had multiple injuries, yeah. and he looked good. He flashed out there on Saturday, and I was very happy for him that he, number one, played well, and number two, mm-hmm. made it through the, the spring, spring healthy again. So we've got another training camp for him to make it through yeah. this year, and I hope that it does because I, I want to see him be able to have a lot all the success that he should. Yeah, it's a long time coming. All right, Nicole, what's going on at Roosters for the rest of the week? Um, so it's April. We just have our appetizer threes day, which mm. is great. The best. Um, mm. Top of the yeah. power rankings. Weather's yes. beautiful. Patios yep. are opening up. Ooh, yeah. And yeah, so just come and all the sporting events. I know like in our area of town, we're always at Roosters after <laughs> the one million spring games going on right now. Yeah. It's the best place to go mm. afterwards. It yeah. is. It's yeah. fun. We heard. We love it. I won't, I won't name the specific recruit. Or commit, but their family was in town and said, "Well, I said, where'd you go to eat on Friday night? Well, we watch the show all the time. We wanted to go to Roosters. <gasps> Let's Did go they love Friday it? night right. at Roosters. We got to go hang out there and see the lounge. They, 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 they sat in the lounge. They yeah. did. Yeah. So I'll let well, you, I'll let you know who so that nice. might have been later on. But they said they loved it. Good. Couldn't have been happier. And it felt like, you know. Oh, I'm so glad. So I can't wait to nice tell Nicole them. and make her smile and not tell her in advance so that you can catch the live reaction <laughs> yes, I love it. on the show. All right, we're going to take a quick break in here. We're going to bring Berm in and keep talking about the Ohio State spring game and what's next when we roll along at Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters, and Berm is here. He's got thoughts on the spring game. Do I? Do you? I think you've got a lot of stuff rattling around in that. Where do I need spring. to start? Uh, I mean, you can start all the way at the Coaches Clinic on Thursday night. It's a full, robust weekend, full Berm. Weekend. Um, Coaches Clinic is the best. Let's start with uh, my Buckeye Leaf, I Give guess, it. since we'll you know rotate. We'll go through, like, it'll be like the... the you You're gonna like, schlag it up. Is it's like a, it's like the snake, you know, like uh, you know when you do a, a, a fantasy draft, snake you draft. have to snake it. Like you guys ended with that, so now we have to begin mm. with that, right? Sure, sure. Sounds good. Perfect analogy. Thank you. Crush it. Thank you. I've been <laughs> working on those quite a bit. Um, <laughs> I think it's got to be Aaron Oland uh, for the Buckeye Leaf. Uh, it, again, I talked about it after the game, uh, snap judgments, but. There's been a lot of things going on around Aaron Nolan that mm-hmm. are not really public knowledge, and it's not really our business to talk about, and I, I, I won't t- say any more than that. But, like, for the kid to persevere for these yeah. last few months and put himself in a position where on a day when it was hard to throw the football, yeah. he, he yeah. seemed to do a pretty good job doing I mean, he had one throw off, you know, early that looked ugly. You're like, ooh, that's not great. But all the talk in the last three weeks has been about Julian Sain, and he has sort of been relegated to the other – like, yeah, we've got these four quarterbacks, and then there's Aaron Nolan, and we'll see what happens. And for him, I thought it was the best performance of anything we've seen out of him this yeah. spring. Yeah. Um, and to be able to do that in the horseshoe with 80,000 people there, it says a lot about him and, and what he's, uh, you know, able to to deal with. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know what it means for the for his future. I, I don't understand why anyone suggests he's transferring or anything like that. I think it's What's silly. interesting about the portal? Been there for three months. Yeah, yeah I- like, and let's say name Julian Say in the starter tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you? And I don't would believe, you, Bob, that they're going to do that. I don't that. think that's the so. case. Like, you have a guy who potentially could win the job who has one year left, or Devin Brown may have, a, like, maybe has two. Mm-hmm. So it's not like this is something. Well, does taking the stripe off make you feel like they said, uh, we've seen you two. Well, this is our, you know, no, so I think quick. The, there, like, again, there were a lot to, of other to things. To what Berm has said, there's a lot of stuff that he had going on, and the fact that he was playing in the spring game at a high level I thought was Even pretty impressive. Even playing at all. Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and I think the other – Bob brings this up a lot. Like, the guys know in the locker rooms. Like, mm-hmm. Julian Sain was playing at a level to take that black stripe off, mm-hmm. and from what we had seen through the first two-thirds of camp, Aaron Nolan was not. Mm-hmm. I think that's why it's from, in, worth pointing out that the last week was so encouraging for him, the last mm-hmm. day specifically. Like – Maybe that will help him if there was if you there was something this, yeah. that's thinking, well, oh gosh, they do like Julian more yeah. than me. Well, the last week is a, you know, maybe you can give yeah. it 
I'd go in and uh, right. have Chip yeah. Kelly remove that black stripe tomorrow. I don't know because yeah. the way you played in the spring game probably won't happen that way. But, you know, he got a reminder and an example that he can still do the same things that Julian Sayan did. Yeah. He just didn't do it at the same time frame. Air did not come to Ohio State with any belief that he was going to be the starting quarterback this season. And yeah. despite the fact that there was a lot of people saying, oh, he's going to be the best player. Like, because recruiting it mm-hmm. does that for people. Because <laughs> uh, you do that. <laughs> I, I don't. I've said that. I, no. It's not me. You're the hype master. Jeremiah Smith, yes. Everyone else, no. <laughs> Edric Houston, maybe now a little bit, yes. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, well, we got another one. But there, there's it's, it's so rare, and especially at quarterback, it is yes. impossible no nearly. Uh, and I, I think it's just very important for Air to have that moment to understand I belong here, and hopefully that propels him forward uh, into a, to an important summer. Jay-Z, you talked about the amount of reps and how we – we all, I think, would have liked to see more of Will Howard and Devin Brown. What do you? What does it mean that that's that two drives were all that those guys needed to head into the summer? Like, wh- where do you think this battle really sits right now? I, I I think it's between those two, which is why that second half was just all young guys and let them go after it. Uh, the The issue with that is I feel like we are almost almost comparing two guys who are very very similar in their quarterback play. Um. You know, Devin last year was the one who's going to be the athletic one and run around. Kyle didn't have that. Well, this this year, Will has that. So does Devin. Um, Will just has, I think, the experience. So I think it's between those two, and I think Devin has played well. I mean, in the times I've seen him at the practice, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's, he's thrown some nice balls. He does look like he has come a long way. Um, but the experience, having a guy who's played four years, who's been out there, who's done – you know, that sort of thing is just going to be hard for him to overcome, I think. But right. I, I do believe it's between those two guys. I, th- I think they're probably leaning towards Will, seeing if Devin does anything crazy here, you know, going into camp to make them say, oh, hold on now. We mm-hmm. might have something here. As we recorded uh, the podcast daily on Sunday night, I was lamenting the fact that we didn't see more of Devin and Will and maybe just letting them throw it around a little bit more. I understand the rationale was because it was a not a good day for throwing and it could have led to – People yeah. may be getting a, a bad impression or the wrong impression. or And then I, I was feeling, like, conflicted on should I be annoyed by this or not. And then I saw an, a, a tweet about, like, 30 minutes after we were done where it was a two-and-a-half-minute long video of Drew Aller's passes in the spring game at Penn State. And, my God, I'm now I'm very happy Ohio State didn't let those guys throw the ball more. <laughs> it was... It was rough to watch. and Because he was probably dealing with some of the same wind. Yeah, I guys imagine. I mean, and... And it was rough, and like that. Now you see this. There's a cut up of two and a half minutes of Drew Aller throwing the ball to God. Those were actually where. from last season, though. No, I mean, <laughs> so, like, I guess I understand now. Like, hey, maybe, maybe this wasn't the time to just let it all out there. And I think the interesting thing about what we saw at Ohio State on Saturday is there was a lot of discussion when Chip Kelly came in. This is Ryan Day's offense, and Chip Kelly's going to run Ryan Day's offense. And I'm not sure I buy that anymore. I really think that there are a lot of Chip touches here that are. Uh, being implemented, and I, Chip has never had wide receivers like this, and I don't think we're going to see everything that he cooks up for those guys until the fall. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think mm-hmm. they were being intentional. The master chef in the back. Yeah, like because he's never had these. Types he's still of, just yeah. looking around at the ingredients. Yeah, yeah there the was a couple plays we had like maybe Jaden Ballard a couple times, like getting the sprint going yeah. and just you know I mean, throwing they the ran ball a handoff to, to the tight end. They ran mm. two quarterbacks out there at the same time. Like, so he sees the speed, and he's just like, all right, let's use it. Let's get these guys running. Kind of weird. Yeah. It, is, it could be good. It's interesting because you mentioned that like little jet is sweep type deal, mm-hmm. which is something that we haven't seen in a while. That you know, Urban ran that a ton, and that ability to get lateral in a hurry. Yeah. It chip wants to obviously get, get downhill, and that's a key when you're get running the football. Hurry. Get vertical. I'm going to get vertical, but you also, if you can stretch the field 53 yards, like there's elements there that will make it very, very difficult to, for people to slow this offense down. And in doing that, it takes some pressure off of the offensive line mm-hmm. when you're able to get horizontal like that because you can't be nearly as aggressive because you have to defend the entirety of the field. Um, and I felt bad because Gabe Powers missed that tackle on uh, Ballard. I'm like, yeah, it's probably the fastest guy on the team. Yeah. So I'm not going to hold it against him because I like Gabe played actually mm-hmm. – probably the best he's played in a while here at Ohio State. He's had a good spring and looks yeah. really good. And so I was like, I'm not going to hold that against him, not being able to catch Jaden Bauer. Our fastest, like one of our fastest guys out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Bobby, as a linebacker. <clears throat> I thought CJ, obviously, it looked like he played his most comfortable football 
Yep. Um, Sonny, obviously transitioning still into linebacker, but played well. As you said, like he's not hitting people like he's going to do in a game. Those guys, yeah. Gabe taking a step up. Arvell taking a step up. Uh, obviously, Cody is entrenched as the guy in the middle. Do you think that this group has gotten significantly better because James is the full-time coach? Because last year, Jim was sort of divided, and, and James didn't have all the authority to make all the calls he wanted or do everything he wanted. Mm-hmm. Or is it just the natural progression of guys getting more veteran? Well, I think uh, natural progression of guys getting more veteran, but that has also been accelerated by probably more specific instruction from James. Like, those guys are all going to get better. They're going to get physically stronger. They've seen more. So you're just going to naturally improve a little bit. But I feel like the majority of that jump has come from James being in that room, putting those guys in unique positions, how he communicates, how he teaches things. It's been very impressive. And I I love watching him do it. It's it's reminiscent to me of Luke Fickle and kind of his style. Obviously, James is his own person. Uh, But then also, you know, he kept those guys. Like, Sonny Style was in there in the second half. Yeah. You know, like, CJ was in there with the four team yeah. at the end. They've been rolling guys through, and it's like, you guys are all young. I mean, Cody Simon's the only one that's played a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The rest of you guys need to get reps. Yeah. And you get reps to see things. You're going to make mistakes. And you, know, you saw in the one touchdown run, you know, the gap closes. I think it was the A closes. The tackle pinches it off. It gets opened up. I think CJ maybe fell back trying to find open there, and that thing squirts through. And it's like, those are things you've got to learn to – learn when to be aggressive, when maybe not to. And sometimes your eyes can deceive you a little bit. And so just being patient, there's a lot of stuff to potentially work through there. But I think James has been pretty happy overall with the development of those guys. He's coming in. It was like, all right, you've got Cody and what else? Yeah, I know freak he, athletes, but you know, yeah. can they go out there and make it happen? That's why I've wondered what to make of this spring, because in the situations that we've watched <laughs> CJ Hicks and Sonny Styles throughout camp, they have not been full live tackling, which is such that's a it's pretty a big key deal, component yeah. of the job. And I wonder if, like, in my mind, I'm just watching the way that those guys move. Like, well, compared to Tommy, like, Sonny's probably a much better athlete. Compared to Steele, CJ's probably a much better athlete. Yeah. What helped those guys, was not the veteran experience, the knowledge of the system, and the being able to get those guys on the ground. And I, I'm not saying that to, like, temper any expectations for CJ Hicks or Sonny Styles. I'm just saying, well, I don't know. We still haven't seen them actually do that on a bunch of Saturdays in a row yet. Yeah, the tackling, I mean, you can be the greatest defensive player in the world until the tackle. If you can't get guys on the ground, then it doesn't matter. So the coach can get you in position. You can work on tackling, but you ultimately have to be the one that gets them down. And James does that. They work on tackling a lot. I think it should be good. It won't be, was it two years, three years ago where they had you know, no, some no, bad no. tackling three years ago. Three, three years ago. <laughs> it's not going to, the tackling is good. It, it is improving. You are what you emphasize the way they work at it. I like it. They'll be fine. I just wasn't sure from the perspective of a year ago, James was the de facto linebacker coach, but the yeah. voice still didn't carry the weight well, that it probably needed to. The, the fight to maybe get Arvell Smith in the linebacker Arvel room Reese, as opposed right, to a yeah. defense, or Arvel, yeah, Arvell Reese, sorry, and as opposed to um, in the, you know, playing defensive Defense end. end yeah. You know, like, he's going to be a guy that, you, know, you look around, you start counting the guys. Like he's the guy that's in, you know, top four or five guys, yeah. and he's going to need to get ready to play. Whereas if you're the defensive end right now, you start looking at all the guys they have there and all the talent. It's like, well, you can work at this, or you, we can work on pass rush and stuff in the summer. But to be good at linebacker, you like you can work on throwing it. in the summer, but you can't work on quarterbacking. Like mm-hmm. you can work on pass rushing, but you can't really work on like being a linebacker and playing off the ball because you have to be able to see things that are happening and be able to react to them in front of you. You can work on specific traits with that. And so James like, listen, let's get this kid in the spring and see what he can do. And he, he's looked very good. He's made some mistakes, but the athleticism is there, and he has been pretty adept at being able to improve. But again, you're heading into a season where you are going to have Lathan Ransom and Caleb Downs behind those dudes, mm-hmm. where – Two years ago, I don't think you felt comfortable saying the lineback- linebackers couldn't make a mistake yeah. because if you do, it's an 80-yard touchdown run. I don't think you have to worry about that as much this year, and I think that will free James up to be a little bit more creative with those guys and allow them to blitz, allow them to use their athleticism and do different things, and maybe take a few more risks where they have not done that in the last few years. Number one, because it's not the strength of Tommy or, or Steele. Number two, because you didn't have the security you felt that you needed at safety. Now you have it. So, like... I'm just struck rewatching this game. Like this defense has every piece yeah. you could possibly need, and now you and have then some. Yeah, and th- then these linebackers, which were the question mark, are so next level athletically over what they had that I think it's 
Like it went from being a real concern of mine heading into spring to now, like I don't, I don't have a single concern about the linebacker. Room. Look at guys with the ability. It's, yeah. I, I'm confident that James can be able to coach him up, and like they've improved dramatically. And we uh, didn't see Cody, who's who's obviously going yeah. to be the the, yeah. the stalwart in the middle, who is going to allow you to. Did take he play at all? We play a couple. He played early on, like, but a couple like a series or two. Yeah, you're going to be able to take risks with 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 CJ and with Sonny and with Arvell because you know that you have Cody and those guys yeah. there, and like that that is a real security blanket. Do you think? Transfer portal season is upon us. Mm. Is it open now? Tomorrow. Well, I was today. everyone is making their grand announcements already. Like that's t- t- Tuesday the sixteenth at midnight. It opens. So, do you think okay. there's anywhere that Ohio like State midnight needs tonight or midnight tonight? Tomorrow? Tonight, midnight on Monday night, twelve a.m. Tuesday. So about twelve hours from now. Yeah. Count oh down. boy, Berm has sleep tonight. Berm has predicted a lot of. Well, you said over seven and a half. I believe. Yeah, I think week. there's a lot of depth on the Ohio State team that is going to be very valuable around the country. And they can, you can lose guys that are not going to hurt this team to lose them as much as they would help other teams to add them. Um, and that said, like there are positions, and I, I, we never like go out of our way to name players individually or anything like that. It's just not how we do things. I don't know, Berm. Uh, that's not how we do things. You can do whatever you want. I'm not going to stop you. I get super. I was super annoyed on Sunday when mm. I saw a local uh, newscaster who played here go on Twitter and specifically say, I, I think Lincoln Keynotes will be in the portal by Monday. Like, why would you do that? Reckless and... Like, it, it's so it, irresponsible. And irresponsible. If, that, if, if, if that had happened when that player was here, they would lose... To their, him? Yeah, they would lose their mind. And I, I don't understand. We're all... You know, you guys played here. You both work other media spots. Uh, like, is there not anything <laughs> sacred still no. amongst, like, the brotherhood? Yeah. People, like... Guy, it's all about clicks now, it is. It is. It, and pisses, it pissed me off so bad yeah. on Sunday. It's it's oh. frustrating to see that because I'm never going to talk about... Like, I'm with you, but I was just joking. Like, yeah. you make it, Those are very personal decisions for guys, mm-hmm. and there's a multitude of reasons. And could you see something like that happening? Possibly. Is it a probability? I, I don't think so at this point. But anyone can look at the roster and say that there are yeah, uh, 10 100%. or 11 guys that it probably makes sense for their football career to yeah. make that decision. Now, there's still those 10 or 11 guys are going to have to weigh the opportunity of, hey, I have a chance to be a part of a national championship team. Hey, I have a chance to still learn how to play quarterback from Ryan Day for another year. And Lincoln Heedle specifically. And Chip Kelly. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll mention him because he, that, that was brought up. He's only been on campus for eight and a half months. Yeah, yeah. He didn't roll early. So just to just assume that he is writing himself off or that he can't play here is ridiculous. Yes, like <laughs> he's a Big Ten quarterback. Yeah, like he's going to be good. He's yes, going to he's going, to, he's really going to win a lot of football games somewhere. And I don't care if he didn't look great on Saturday. No. He's been here eight and a half months. Yeah, like let the we we are losing our minds when it comes to. Accelerating the development path of these kids, like that's well, it Lincoln never was about, this way before. And Lincoln talked about it. He goes, "It was never the plan for me to come in right. and play like year, in year one two. or year two. Like it's there's a process yeah. that's going to play out." So I think it, it just goes to the way of college football now, right? We just expect, oh, we have five quarterbacks. They're all really highly rated and pretty good. We expect somebody to just go sure. leave and do and that's something. fine. And if that, if if someone wants to leave, and and that's the yeah. thing, there is a big difference. And I, I don't I mean to keep rambling, but no, I, think there's a, I think there's a huge difference between someone wanting to leave and someone thinking that maybe they need to, need leave. to leave. And that yes. is a very big difference. And I, I'm telling you from conversations we've had doing the Buck Nines with all three mm. of those quarterbacks in the last three weeks, Lincoln Keenholz, uh, Devin Brown, and Will Howard, none of those guys want to leave Ohio State. That is a guarantee. Now, does that mean someone won't? Of course not. But the, the assumption that someone is like, I think what pisses me off the most is that there is a decision mm. or a an, an assumption that the, that these guys are going to cut and run like they're afraid. Like you come to Ohio State because you you know oh, yeah. what it's about when oh, they recruit those kids, right? right? You know what it's about. <laughs> no one's afraid to compete. So if you sit around and you realize, hey, here comes Julian saying, here come, maybe maybe that does drive Lincoln to look a different direction. But I'm going to tell you, I don't feel that way from talking to him in the last couple of weeks. Do you? I feel like Devin Brown's going to transfer. <laughs> I mean, I, the burn I, the ships comment really did it for me. Anything is possible. I mean, that's that's the I, that I is the whole it. point of the recruiting. Yeah. Uh, and that's the sarcasm, football. by the way. Yeah. Anything is possible. I like this. This is 
Berm bantering right here. This is it this just could pisses be its own me off. I know like, Lincoln. He's out there competing. Like he's done some good things. He struggled at times. You know, but it's all, almost like he's in his first year. He played on as a true yeah. freshman You're in a bowl me, game where he's getting his butt kicked. The guy who's been <laughs> on campus for eight months, who <laughs> basically made himself a sacrificial lamb in the yes. Cotton Bowl, <laughs> who after the the spring game shows up at the Ohio State four mile around Sunday morning, yes, at yeah. in the morning, yeah. is transferring the next day. Come on, yeah. Yeah, that's that's another good point that he was out the four mile. Yeah, like, Were you there, Berm? No, I just saw it on uh, Twitter. Okay. I, was, I, I was not. I was driving 120 miles back home. That's good. Justin was there. I was there. I ran the four mile. Those poor runners out there in the wind. That it wasn't that windy. Times. It wasn't really? that windy. Well, I'll tell you this. I had the double stroller. Yeah, so that's like a, at times. That's like a kite. At times, you're getting the uphill with the wind. Yeah. I was really leaning into it quite yeah. a bit. I was out in the Marysville ways. trade winds at the Ridge. Oh, eight, at the Ridge? That oh. was the, I mean, that was windy. The worst <laughs> conditions I've ever played at. Yeah, at that the, would not be fun. At the, er, Early season golf in the yeah, wind? Yeah, that was not Whew. what I needed for the conference. <laughs> no, not at all. Before we spin out here. Again, Whoa, is that what we're doing? <laughs> is that what yeah, happens? I know, I know how this works. We're going to start to deviate. <laughs> I, we're not going to sit here and bring up specific names of guys that could or... or I was going to talk about positions that so might what be do they interest. Need? What do they yeah. need? What do the Buckeyes need in the transfer portal is a much bigger and fairer I question, would right? say, I mean, people would talk about the running back, but I, I feel good about the four guys yeah. you have. If there's a guy plus out there cat. that... Plus cat. Plus cat. That's what I'm saying. If there's a guy that fits, that would make great sense, it's like a senior, come in, play a yeah. lot of ball. Like, but not something you have to reach for. Checks right? all the boxes. A graduate maybe, transfer with Big Ten experience, maybe? Yeah, maybe a guy that has a like unique skill set, like ultra speed, great receiver on the back. Something that could give you something unique. And then maybe that we keep talking about the right side of the offensive line. That would be the only other... Area, I can't yeah, for the life of me think of someone else that you would want to bring in. Caden Proctor's probably going to go back into the portal. <laughs> probably, probably not. <laughs> if there's an elite right tackle out there, oh, go get him. Go get him. Because I don't think that the regular comments that Ryan Day made in the last 10 days, well, Josh has played some guard. Josh has played some guard. Is on accident. It's to say, if we can find another right tackle, yeah. we'll take a big guy. We'll take we'll take someone. Yeah, we'll but it's got to be the right. I mean, I don't think they're be, bringing in just anyone. No, it has to no. be a surefire starter, which is not easy to find at this point. When you're Ohio State, Ohio like, State caliber starter. Right? Like yes. so, if you aren't finding that guy, then you stand pat. It's like that. Nemo, right? <laughs> Running back. I I firmly expect that TC Caffey will be elevated to scholarship at some point. So you'll have your five scholarship backs. And yeah. now, is that enough to suffice or to satisfy people who want? How many scholarship? Action? I mean, like it's a, it's a one right. position room. Like, people want, have. I, I think people want action for action's sake. Sometimes well, might, need, might need three now. We saw that first play of the scr- scrimmage. I mean, if well, you're going to run, run that, then you can bring right now, in two or three more. Now, to be fair, life. this is a position that the last several years has been. Well, we've needed three or ravaged four. by injuries. I understand it does that. Three. So, like. It's possible that getting to five may be important. Now, yeah. what, what's likely but to they happen? they already have five, so I agree with both of you. If, if you lose six more players to the transfer portal, which I think is a – got to replace those guys. A conservative norm, right, you need, to, you need to replace them with depth. So you're not going to replace them with Ohio State-level starters. And this is the way that I've been trying to do this, and it's a little bit of a recalibration, I think, from a, like a roster-building perspective. Nobody knows or gives a crap who the four-string running back on the Cincinnati Bengals is, okay? Like, nobody does. Do they carry four in the league? Some. Some yeah. teams. Nobody cares. So, like, after those first 60, after those first 65 players on this roster, yeah. I think you need to just prepare yourself that that there's going to be a lot of rotation. and a Churn. Lo- uh, churn the, ch- churn the depth. Churn. So, you're going to be looking for depth to replace depth. It's like apple butter. Yeah, I just don't – I just don't – I really think that you have to view it in a different way than we've always done. And, it, and some of that's because recruiting allows us to get to know guys so well and we know all their stories. Like in the NFL. Because of you, you're a great. Yeah. But now, like, like Tom Rinaldi over here. Yeah. But now, like, what those guys do with their careers, I don't think people can be so personally invested in every single player's long term uh, result at, at Ohio State. Like, I, I think that there's the two deep, maybe even in some positions at Ohio State, the three deep. Um, but. How how can you care that much about every? And this is not to say people care a lot, Berm. I'm just saying, like it's this, one of the beauties of the Buckeyes. It's not to eighty thousand people, eighty thousand and twelve. It's not to suggest those players aren't important. It's to say that you you aren't going to be able to maintain, maintain a roster, roster every year. Yeah. Where if someone at Ohio State is player sixty one at Ohio State, he's going to be player one on seventy five other teams in the country. Yeah. Like that's a hard sell to say. Hey, you know what? Stay here and don't play. That's yeah. that's difficult. That is, and I don't know, 
from a fan perspective, like that, that it's easy to swallow. But I think you almost have to start viewing it that way. No one cares when the Bengals cut their fifty fourth player. You gotta choke it down, Berm. <laughs> So. My mom would always say, I don't like this. You got to choke it down. Choke Love it your down. vegetables. Love them Love while they're them. here. Yeah. And, and wish them well, well when they Wish leave. them well when they go. And then, like you said, the guys you're replacing them with are going to be more probably mid, mid-level yeah. guys that are starters at other schools yeah. or coming in here to want to finish out. And as long as they're competent players, like you feel good about it. But it's impossible, like you said. I understand why those guys, it's the receiver. It, basically, it's the receiver room. Yeah. Like, there was Great a, players come in. Some yeah. guys are going to go somewhere else. There was a visitor this weekend. I think I'm. I'm not. I'm. It was so innocuous that I'm not even sure if I'm getting the school right. Some from. I think he's from Cornell. Like he's a, a grad transfer. Yeah. He's a visitor here this weekend. He's like a tight end. Uh, mm, we could use one athlete of those. guy. Like he's not here visiting for no reason. So he's maybe looking to grad transfer and preferred walk. Like that's those are that's going to be depth from now on. Like it's not going to be the same as it used to be. You're not going to have 85 guys that can. Play first How do you feel State? about having like some of those older guys, Berm, and not so many young dudes? I think it's valuable, Bob. Experience matters. But does it eat at you a little bit? No. <laughs> those are the guys that you got to know, Berm. Yeah. I, I appreciate people who get a chance to live out their dream. And if there's some kid from Ohio who went to Cornell and did a whole nerd thing for four years and got a degree <laughs> and he's all big red, cool. Oh, big and then he gets to come home and wear an Ohio State uniform Andy for a season. Go. Like, that's, that's awesome. So uh, he, he gave it away. It was the Nard Dog. In town. Nard Dog. Andy was Bernard. It was Andy Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> go Big Red. Uh, well, that'll do it. Sorry for all the talk. Spinning out here at the end is Burns. That's, that's what we do. Yeah. Sorry so for portal, the talking on the podcast. That portal we talk. sees, yeah. Portal. I just didn't want to talk much more about golf and running because it feels like this is a, an important week. Yeah. We spin. Burn pins and needles. A lot's going to happen. How The portal is, what, Tuesday to win? Two weeks. The Two end weeks. of the month. Gosh, that's a long portal. That is a long portal. How about this? You could be Oregon and be in your second week of practice. Oh, I know. Well, portal, yeah. portal is open again in Ann Arbor, and their spring game is not till Saturday. So you. That'll be a fun week for them. Yeah. Who's going to actually show up? The dumbest play? thing is that for grad transfers, it's one more day. It's it goes till May first. For everyone else, it's April sixteenth. Well, 16th for grad the transfers, like they could get in. I know, they want. but why is it? Why do they even have to? They don't. Suggest. That's why they're already in there on. But Monday. it says it's May first for them. Okay. Well, <laughs> the walk on should always be in the transfer that portal. That is advice that must be taken. Um, come on, why does why does a walk on have to announce he's in the portal? If someone wants to put him on scholarship, it's free. Well, it like be that free either. for the program. It's free for that person, it should be. Do anyway, what, do what you like. Spinning out is done, and spring camp is done at Ohio <laughs> Eat State. Eat a cheese as well. stick. Thanks to Roosters and Nicole Cox for having us in here to talk about the Buckeyes with a fun, casual conversation at a fun, casual joint. That is Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you back in here next Monday.